So today, uh, this webinar is based on the emerging technologies on coral reef conservation. So most of you people already uh, know what is coral reef or what is coral. Uh, there are many channels nowadays uh, focusing on the environmental concern about uh, coral reef conservation. So marine uh, biotechnology, uh, there is a small contribution from marine side to biotechnology. That is, uh, without marine, uh, biotechnology is uh, incomplete because most of the uh, components and the uh, particles are extracted from marine invertebrates and marine organisms like uh, collagen, uh, which is uh, uh, helps in the improves our own healing activities and the various enzymes and proteins of our marine life. They have a great importance in the biotechnological studies, especially in PCR, we are using some enzymes, not thermophilic uh, enzymes. These enzymes are extracted from the hydrothermal vents of uh, extreme uh, bacteria, which lives in the very extreme hot condition, so that the high temperature of a PCR can be possible nowadays. And similarly, cyclophiles, they, uh, they can be capable of uh, dwelling in a low temperature, very low temperature. These kind of things are uh, the uh, gifts from the marine to the biotechnology field. And uh, there are some uh, means, uh, the major contribution is from the coral reef environment to the biotechnological studies, especially in the form of uh, drugs. Uh, similarly, uh, like uh, anti-inflammatory compounds and uh, anti-lymphogeogenic components, anti prolific compounds, then cytotoxic and also antimicrobial, antivirus, and antifoli compounds are extracted from the living organisms present in the coral reef environment, like uh, corals, gargonians, and uh, others. So, uh, these are some of the uh, extracts derived from the um, coral reef environment, and these are all the species which are contributed this kind of uh, components from the uh, marine environment. So the core of this, uh, now, we have, we are, now we are going to uh, brief about what is a coral reef. So coral reef are, looks like a plant. See this picture, they are, looks like a plant, but they are very bright in color, but they are animals because they belong to the family and belong to marine invertebrates of the phylum nidarium. Nidarium means the animals which are having the stinging cells. So each coral is a uh, made up of uh, tiny animals called the polyps. So I'll, I'll go through one by one, so it will be have some good idea about what is coral and what is coral. So coral is a collection of small, tiny animals called polyps. So like our honeycomb, there are many honeybees are uh, gathering and constructing the honeycomb, right? Similarly, many polyps are gathering and constructing their own uh, house. That is the exoskeleton by the secretion of the calcium carbonate, they are building the corals. So, uh, these corals uh, live in the compounds of uh, colonies. So, these colonies form the reef region. So, uh, uh, the major contributor of the coral uh, reef is the uh, corals. So, many polyps are constructing a single coral, and the many coral colonies are forming the coral reef environment. So, as in the if welcome uh, address, uh, ma'am rightly pointed out that uh, coral reefs are the tropical rainforest of the ocean because they are giving more and more benefits to the mankind. So, approximately 25% uh, of all marine life is, uh, can be found in the coral reef environment. That much of it is vast and uh, very important because uh, there are many creatures, as you can see, there are many fishes are swimming around here. So there are many creatures present in the coral reef, so that it acts as a feeding and a breeding ground for the other uh, organisms. So that these organisms always prefer the coral reef in grandma, so that uh, to uh, pray that uh, organisms, fishes will come. So to feed the small fishes, big fishes will come. So the environment will be very productive. So, but the corals are not present in all the seas. They are restricted to only the tropical seas. And in our India, we have a coastline of around 8,000 kilometers. Among which, we have only 2,705 kilometers spread of coral reef only. 
So the major coral reef uh, environment of India consists of uh, the Gulf of Manar and Bagh Bay, which is present in Tamil Nadu near Rameshwaram, and the Gulf of Kutch, Lakshadweep, and uh, Andaman and Nicobar Islands. This map you can see this. So in India we have only fringing and uh, atoll kind of leaves, uh, reefs. So what is fringing and what is atoll? We will see uh, here. So. There are three types in the reef. First one is called fringing reef. In fringing reef, the reef is present just encircled in the island. So barrier reef, there will be a water body in between the reef and the island. This water body is called lagoon. That is in atoll, only the outer ring of corals will be there without the presence of island. So the island will be absent. So this area is now is called so this is fringing, and uh, now this is the uh, barrier, and this is atoll. Okay. So there, there are three kinds of uh, types of reefs are there. So in India we have fringing and the uh, atolls, and the barrier reef is not present in India. So Australian Great Barrier Reef is the best example of uh, this type of barrier reef. And uh, as I said earlier, coral polyp is the fundamental unit of the coral. So this is the structure of the polyp. So they have, uh, they are just surrounding with the ring of uh, tentacles. So these things are like uh, projections are called as uh, tentacles. So they are usually multiple in six number. If you count this one, it's um, around 12 uh, tentacles are there. So they are multiple in six in number in Clearactinian uh, coral. Whereas in octocorals, they are 18, uh, multiples of 18 numbers. They are sedentary, so they cannot move from one place to another. So they are fixed with the one place, so that they are uh, they always uh, looking for their prey. So they prefer in the current uh, uh, means uh, strong wave action area, so that the prey will come by the uh, force of uh, water current. So they use the nematocyst to present in the Cells, uh, this, uh, that is the uh, stinging cells, and uh, it uh, attacks the prey, sting the prey, and paralyze and uh, capture the prey. So that uh, they consider as the animal, and uh, they put it in the phylum Nidaria. So this is about coral polyp. In each coral polyp, you can see uh, the beautiful symbiosis of one algae called the zooxanthellae. So in this picture, this brownish area, no, these are all the Zooxanthellae. So this one gives the beautiful color to the coral. So without this zooxanthellae, the corals cannot get color. They are simply white in nature because they, uh, their exoskeleton is consisted of calcium carbonate. So that uh, this algae gives uh, supplementary food and also bright color to the corals. So because this is algae due to photosynthesis, it gives color. On the other hand, it gets uh, shelter from the uh, polyp. So this is about the coral association. And uh, there are uh, two types of reproduction in the coral. The uh, first one is called uh, sexual uh, reproduction. In this uh, sexual reproduction, there are two methods. One is uh, broadcasting type, and another one is brooding type. Brooding means the younger one, that is the planula larvae, is, uh, um, developed inside the coral and it uh, means it emerges out. But in the broadcasting means the sperms and eggs are just broadcasted out. The fertilization is taken place in the outside water. After uh, fertilization, the planula larvae form and the planula larvae is uh, just floating in the water column and find a good surface that means the hard surface. If it preferred surface is uh, available, it settles and uh, by uh, secreting, uh, secreting uh, calcium carbonate and it started growing by multiplication. So this is about the sexual reproduction and uh, uh, we will see this video.
So this is about the uh, reproduction, uh, sexual reproduction of the koala seeds. So due to the full moon season, uh, they are uh, they have a synchronous uh, spawn. So the en entire environment of uh, that uh, region, they are having the mass spawning it, it is happen due to the uh, during the full moon season. So these uh, eggs and the uh, sperms are fertilized outside. So they uh, form a uh, Baby coral that is a planula larvae. So, this plan or this is a planula larvae, it finds out so the substrate from here and it settles down. After that, it makes a, it's divided into two, three, four, eight, some, then it forms a new colony over there. So, this is about the um, <clears throat> life cycle, means uh, the coral uh, reproduction. So, apart from this uh, asexual uh, sexual reproduction, there is another uh, kind of uh, reproduction is there that is called asexual reproduction. Uh, here, the coral, uh, that uh, single uh, polyp, no, this coralite is uh, themselves divided into two. That is called the budding. So, in the mother coral is getting divided into two uh, daughter cells. This is called uh, intra tentacular budding. This type of uh, reproduction. And whereas in another time here, we can see a small coral, baby coral is formed in outside of the mother one. This is called extra tentacular budding. So these uh, two types of uh, asexual uh, reproduction is there. Apart from this, fragmentation is also there. So fragmentation means the uh, colony is uh, break, uh, broken off from the, uh, the small branch is broken off from the larger colony. So these uh, broken branches can be uh, grown into a new uh, new coral colony. So this is called the fragmentation. So uh, sexual and the asexual, both methods and both type of reproduction is present in the coral leaves. So now we are going to see what are all the threats uh, present uh, to the coral leaves. The first one is uh, bleaching. Bleaching is caused main, mainly by the temperature anomaly. So the increase in temperature and decrease in temperature will result in the bleaching. Bleaching means the expulsion of the zoonotic light. So in this uh, picture, you can see the color is getting uh, dull now. So here it become whitish now. So this is called bleaching. The entire zoonotic light will leave the coral. Uh, when the temperature is not acceptable because these corals are very, very sensitive. They are very sensitive to uh, temperature, sedimentation, uh, salinity variation, all uh, things, they are very sensitive. So that they are restricted to some places. As I said earlier, uh, these corals are present only in the tropical uh, seas, but even though in tropical seas, they prefer only one place, one particular uh, preferred place to go. Uh, that's why uh, our Tamil Nadu is there. Okay, we have main, in mainland we have the largest uh, part of coral reef in India. So here you can see this is the uh, uh, coral uh, live coral with the brownish color. In the stem coral is bleached out due to the bleaching because of the temperature uh, variation. So this will happen in uh, every year. Sometimes in uh, 1992 it happened uh, mass bleaching. 1998 uh, happened. 2000 happened. 2010 happened. So we are uh, always monitoring the health status of the coral so we, uh, to conserve and predict the um, percentage and biophysical status of the coral. So this is the major uh, natural impact to the coral. So why the bleaching is happening? This is due to the global warming. So global warming because of the uh, pollution uh, ultimately it uh, comes to our uh, mistake. So second one is uh, sedimentation. Sedimentation means uh, due to the cyclone and the storm times, the entire uh, water, means the sea water will be very turbid. Turbid means uh, it, um, it has a very, uh, so sedimentation will be very high. So during calm season, you can see the very clear picture. So this is uh, called the sediment trap. Uh, These traps are placed to measure the, how much quantity of sedimentation occurred 
by uh, monthly so due to uh, during rough season you cannot see that the area uh, in clearly you no know? so this is the uh, just the example for how much the sedimentation occurs in the uh, coral environment due to the uh, monsoon season so once the sedimentation is uh, turbulent the water column is turbulent the upwelled sediment will finally settle on the coral so here one soft coral is completely smothered by the uh, silt isn't it so by what happens this uh, silt and sediment finally reaches the mouth of the coral and it blocks the mouth so that the polyps cannot be extended so without the uh, extension of polyps they cannot take the food so finally the coral will die in this picture you can see the left hand side is the healthy coral whereas the right hand side the completely dark and coral it's already covered with the other uh, bacteria and the marine uh, algae so this is a partial death so finally what happens this uh, algae and the other uh, microbes will attack other healthy coral also so then they can't hold the places so this is sedimentation and uh, developmental process nowadays it's a very uh, uh, commonly we can see in uh, ecr and other areas Uh, many many projects are developed in this sort of area so the big um, so the construction has happened just on the seashore after tsunami only in india uh, they stopped uh, constructing they banned constructing uh, uh, buildings in near shore area but uh, in some uh, cases they are just ignoring especially a uh, few industries are mainly placed on the seashore and what they simply dump their uh, waste under uh, the drainage sewage water in in the uh, marine environment so finally here the sewage water from the city is uh, pumped inside the uh, marine environment which is a coral reef environment without any proper treatment so this kind of things will uh, completely damaging the corals so another kind of uh, impact uh, by the human it's a trap fishing so this is the left picture is shows the trap so this kind of traps are uh, placed in the coral reef uh, in the gap between the corals they put some uh, bait inside so that the uh, big fishes will come and the, uh, they got uh, entangled so uh, sometimes uh, the fishermen uh, don't know where they put the uh, traps and they basically abandon the traps so these traps will uh cover the corals and they damage the coral and sometimes these uh, traps are made up of a very uh, strong uh, iron cast iron so these iron rods are uh, damaging the coral because corals are very fragile in nature so uh, their their growth rate is very very meager so for 0.5 mm to 3 mm they it takes around a year to grow uh, some corals so but we can easily destroy it because they are made up of a calcium carbonate no like our sharks so it is very brittle in nature so these kind of traps are uh, damaging the corals but it takes a uh, years to grow back and uh, this one is a uh, very worst practice of uh, illegal fishing blast fishing so this fisherman is just uh, putting a dynamite inside the uh coral reef environment so the dynamic will blast inside water the sand water and all the fishes in the vicinity will uh, become uh, die and they float so they will simply go on collect this one this will also damaging the uh, coral and uh, this is oil spill so in my pre uh, first slide i said um, uh, without the marine environment uh, there is no uh, there is a no bio, biotechnology no so here the uh, things is changing without the biotechnology we cannot uh, uh, overcome the oil spill so there are many uh, new technologies are emerged from biotechnology like uh, bio remediation so this kind of things are nowadays used to um, uh, digest the oil spills they uh, produce uh, uh, super bacteria to <coughs> sorry so digest the oil spill so our uh, ship, ship ground and the spill of oil will finally uh, enter into the coral reef environment and the, the entire animals living organisms present in the area uh, become uh, dead 
So these are all uh, threats are available to the coral reef. So if the coral reef is not there, we cannot get much with the drugs and the other uh, uh, marine natural products from the coral, uh, coral reef. So we have to conserve the coral reef. So how we can conserve the coral? Here comes the fragmentation. So in the First uh, reproduction, I said no. Uh, in the asexual reproduction, there are two methods, budding and uh, fragmentation. So the fragmented coral can grow into a new colony. So this idea was developed uh, into the transplantation technique. So the small uh, colony uh, is uh, taken off from the branch and uh, it was uh, planted in the another area. So here I show you video how the uh, uh, we are collecting the um, quality from the core. So small branches collected from the coral colony. Actually, it's a very small colony, so we collected the entire uh, coral. So this, uh, this is Acropora species, very fragile in nature, and they have a best uh, growth rate. So we prefer to transplant this kind of um, corals which are uh, having good uh, growth rate. So uh, this is called uh, nabi. So uh, we are taking this uh, nubbin and uh, we are uh, placing them in the uh, table. Like, uh, so these kind of iron tables are made and uh, these nubbins are fixed with uh, some uh, underwater glue or underwater cement and uh, they acclimatize in the same area where they are collected. This is called acclimatization for some period. So this is one type of uh, nursery. This is another type of nursery. This is called the tree uh, nursery. So in this uh, thing, this one is better than this because here sedimentation will uh, sometimes kill the baby corals, that is the uh, nursery corals. Whereas here sedimentation will uh, will not uh, have that much of impact because they are hanging in the midwater. So this is further is called as uh, midwater nursery. So after six to twelve months, they become this much of uh, big colony. So after that, these uh, colonies or uh, small nubbin are transplanted into the area where uh, they don't have much diversity of corals or uh, they don't have uh, the new area which we can establish a new nursery. So this kind of thing is called <coughs> transplantation. Another thing, uh, technology is called translocation. So uh, this translocation means we have to, uh, instead of taking a small branch from a colony, we are just moving the entire uh, coral colony from one place to another. This is uh, mainly, uh, this uh, type of translocation is uh, um, useful for the places where some uh, oil refineries in uh, Gulf countries know. There are many uh, oil resources are available offshore area. So if they find the new uh, oil resources in the offshore, immediately uh, they want to put some constructions and the pipes to the shore area. So definitely that will damage the environment. So that that time, what uh, the people do, we remove the entire uh, coral uh, reef uh, in that area. So this kind of uh, here, uh, the one uh, diver is selling uh, under. Uh, from the base and the removing the entire uh, exact the coral column. So these coral columns are just to put it in the uh, water basket and the transporter to the nearby area where the um, <coughs> impacts on the damages on the anthropogenic activities are not uh, very less. So that area we have to uh, place the coral uh, by using the underwater cement. So here, uh, this one is the new uh, environment where the uh, collected uh, translocated corals are pasted. So uh, after some time, they will go uh, fully. <coughs> These are all the very uh, basic methods of transplanting. 
and uh, uh, one novel method uh, recently uh, in actually it uh, developed in uh, 1980 and now it's uh, get, uh, getting a good uh, percentage that is ad uh, advanced to one this is called uh, electrolysis of sea water so the thing is um uh, do, uh while uh, constructing that exoskeleton of calcium carbonate these corals are uh, taking the calcium present in the sea water and the atmospheric oxygen that is carbon dioxide so calcium carbon will be formed so they want uh, actually there is a process of uh, lysing the water and uh, take the calcium from the uh, dissolved water condition so uh, this electrolysis is doing the thing to enhance to give the uh, to enhance the calcification the electrolysis process so the calcium will be accreted uh, very uh, um, drastically because the corals cannot that much uh, they have that much potential to extract calcium so they are giving this kind of boost to increase the mineral accretion so this is nowadays uh, very uh, famous in many countries they are using uh, uh, underwater museums so they put uh, this kind of different different uh, shapes and the uh, statues on underwater and they fix the uh, coral branches uh, here and there and they put uh, electrical uh, very battery electrical current with the uh, anode and the cathode so this will electrolyze the uh, calcium present in the water and uh, it enhances the growth so uh, see, uh, in the um, within a six months of time they we will get a good result in the uh, this kind of uh, things is the uh, okay so these are all the uh, technologies uh, we can use to uh, develop or sustain or conserve the coral reefs so from a uh, <clears throat> he is uh, Dr. Uh, Jacob Coste. He is uh, called as the father of scuba diving. So uh, his quote uh, is: "If our grandchildren never have the opportunity to see living corals, it will be the everlasting shame of our age." So, so uh, um, means um, so we have to conserve the coral reef environment. Uh, not only for our uh, biotechnological purposes, but also for our uh, grandchildren to the betterment of our uh, life.